Welcome to this preview of HERMAC Summit 2011. Today's program features a conversation with author and keynote presenter Peter Leiden. Hosting today's conversation is Beth Bondi, Director, Acquisition Management Office for BMO Harris Bank and Chair of the Summit 2011 Program Committee. Welcome, Pete. We're very excited for you to be joining Summit this year. Just wanted to spend a few minutes with you asking uh, some questions to get some insights on what you're going to share with us. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to November. Well, much of your work and the topic of your book, The Long Boom, focuses on how technology is changing in our world. What are some of the trends that are affecting business? Well, at, at a basic level, basic, any fundamental changes in technology uh, are going to affect business. And, and so uh, the talk is almost one in the same with, uh, you know, connecting to uh, how these things connect, uh, change with business. But some of them, let's just throw out a few that I think uh, are emerging now that I think are going to have implications for business. One of them, let's just say, is uh, there's been a lot of talk about tablets, for example, uh, and, you know, the Apple iPads, and there's been a flurry of other uh, tablets that are coming in its wake. Um, you know, people think, well, is this a big deal? How big a deal? It's not that much different than maybe, you know, oversized cell phones. I mean, you hear, hear a lot of talk in the media like that. This is a big deal, and I think it is cracking, uh, let's say, in, uh, the central missing piece that we actually had uh, in technology, which is um, the right device to consume, you know, in-depth, um, long-form uh, material like books, like magazines uh, and even newspapers, uh, you know, they, they were really it was the, the phone, the mobile phone was too small to really consume that, and even a laptop, you know, was really too big to curl up in bed or, or run around on a, on a subway with. And so now we've actually got a really powerful device, extremely well designed, touch, you know, interface that allows you to do that. And, it, and clearly, the numbers are showing that it, the people are adapting it just hand over fist. I mean, you know, Apple in the first nine months of the iPad sold a hundred million ebooks, and uh, and even now with uh, uh, Amazon is really selling almost as many ebooks as all their hardbacks and paperbacks combined. They actually sell more ebooks than paperbacks. So this device now, or these devices in this kind of realm, are really shifting a lot of the serious content, in-depth content, is now going through those things. And so I think businesses which often deal with that kind of more in-depth um, kind of a difficult material, as opposed to little tweets or something like that, uh, you know, really do have to take that that trend seriously and really have to move fast. Uh, likewise, there's a big shift. I mean, we've, we've been dealing with the rise of video you know, ever since YouTube, uh, which frankly is worth reminding, was, was didn't even exist in 2005. Uh, but beyond just the kind of implications of YouTube and that, and we can talk about that, um, the amount of video that is now moving over the Internet is uh, literally half of all traffic on the backbone of the Internet is, is video now. And it, within five years, basically by 2015, Cisco, who does all the routers in the backbone, is predicting uh, about 90% of all traffic on the internet will be video. So what there's a clearly a shift and a forward spin shift towards increasing amounts of video, not just well-crafted pieces from like television shows on Hulu, and not just kind of you know people creating their own things um, like uh, you know you get on YouTube, but uh, increasingly we're watching these big video channels opening up between devices, uh, as in Skype or now all Apple's devices from the iPod all the way up to every uh, every uh, uh, computer they sell is, is comes complete with this thing called FaceTime, which allows you to just open these channels immediately between all these devices. This is starting to be a very big deal, and how opening these live video channels across the net uh, is something, again, that will have really big implications. On, on business. And just a third thing I'll mention, we can talk about a little bit more, is uh, I think we're moving into a, a new phase, uh, a much uh, a phase shift, you could say, in collaboration software, uh, allowing people to really work with sophistication and nuance um, and com on complex things uh, across the Internet in ways that uh, really have been reserved uh, up to now into face-to-face -face meetings. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk over the years of you know how much um, 
business can get conducted virtually uh, without flying people in uh, to different cities and for meetings and all the like. Uh, there's been a lot of predictions of when that's going to happen really, and, and, and when it's really going to start to bite in a deeper way. I think we're starting to move towards that phase. I think there's this next generation of collaborative tools, collaborative software, uh, with this higher bandwidth and with these open channels of video uh, and, and a variety of other trends we would talk about. Anyhow, these are now hitting a threshold where I think we're going to watch a lot more complex interactions between people happen uh, virtually and happen across the Internet. And I think all these trends, and there will be others we'll talk about, clearly have business implications. You could tease out business implications for all, all three of the ones I mentioned there. The oh. tablet phenomena, the massive use of video, and ultimately collaboration software. All three of those, I think, would have um, obvious and, and not so obvious implications for business. And, and knowing that at Summit is primarily, obviously, human capital specialist, what type of implications, I know you shared already with the collaboration, what other implications does this technology or the emergence of this technology affect um, how we do business, how we work? Well, I think one obvious thing when you start to think about the virtualness of it um, is uh, your, your pool of, um, of human resources, you know, can dramatically expand. Um, and I know you guys are regionally based uh, based in Chicago. I think is you know something to start really thinking about is to what extent does the human network pool uh, start to get you know not geographically bonded and and to what extent you can really start take advantage of human resources far beyond you know the, your kind of geographic borders there, uh, and vice versa. How to what extent the, the human capital that you have in Chicago can actually be leveraged uh, in cities and countries for that matter, you know, far beyond your your borders. Now I don't want to get too ahead of the game, um, and you know there has been a lot of speculation of you know no one will ever travel again and. You know, we're never going to have another conference again. Um, you know, people get a little giddy on the, you know, the possibilities. Of this. I, I don't want to over push this, but I do want to say um, we are starting to hit a point where it's it's quite um, it's getting to the point where where you really are getting to do much more sophisticated back and forth. So what this has is the implications for human resources. Is you are really starting to get to the point now where. Um, it doesn't have to be somewhere within about 100 and 150 mile radius of Chicago there um, to basically get into a, a very nuanced and very you know c kind of um, complex and sophisticated meeting. Uh, you know, I think you could start to think, oh my God, well, you know, maybe we could draw for different people. So anyhow, there, there's there's just really immediate ways to think about that. Another way to think about it. And I know you've actually had other people in the past or might be talking more specifically on demographics, but um, but I do think um, there's some, a lot of demographic implications on this, too. Um, as we well know, just anecdotally, uh, you know, younger people tend to be uh, more comfortable with a lot of these new technologies and trying these new technologies. Uh, you know, clearly the, the millennial generation, the, the young people think of them in their 20s and teens, uh, a generation, by the way, which is bigger than the baby boom in terms of sheer numbers. Uh, you know, this is the generation and it's just come of age, you know, cutting their teeth on these technologies. They think of it as, as naturally as, uh, you know, it's just obviously, na I mean, they, they didn't even know what a dial-up is or they don't really understand, you know, what a rotary phone was. I mean, all the kind of things that everybody else is trying to rework their way to this digital age. Of course, they're just kind of very, very kind of um, fluent with it. Uh, they are essentially, um, you know, going to be driving a lot of the adoption of these things and, and actually doing a lot of the innovation in these things about how to really um, maximally use them. Uh, they're going to be doing, doing a lot of the, the kind of um, the, uh, fine tuning of them or the applications of them for very specific kind of areas um, in, in within your company and departments within your company, things like that. I think age, for example, now is going to make a difference a little bit in how you might think of uh, choosing for certain kind of tasks or drawing off of certain kinds of folks. I think I think it's going to be an interesting. Um, it's going to rise in its importance. I think in in, your, in evaluating you know who's the right fit for uh, various kinds of jobs. So anyhow, there's 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 technology ways to think about. It, there's demographic ways to think about it. Um, but I think in in general, your field of human resources is um, uh, is really going to is going through flux. 
is uh, is getting you know clearly and directly affected by these technologies. Uh, and I think it is something that you'd be wise to you know really really tune into and really think think deeply about. And it sounds like that's what you're doing with this uh, this meeting coming up in uh, in November. Well, thank you, Pete, for speaking with us. We are really looking forward to your insights and seeing you at summit in November. Great. I'm looking forward to it too. See you then. Hear more from Peter and other thought leaders at Summit 2011 on Tuesday, November 8th. For complete program information and to register, please visit us online at hermac.org.